Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. on a Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. And welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we have no sponsors, no hidden agendas, and no BS. But we do have a giveaway to remind you about, so let's get to that. Because time is running out for you to head on over to YouTube, subscribe to the Crypto Overnighter podcast on YouTube, and then comment on the May 2023 covers video. Subscribed commenters with a U.S. mailing address will be entered to win a shiny new hardware wallet. So you might want to get on that. The Swiss National Bank is gearing up to launch a wholesale central bank digital currency on the nation's digital exchange, SIX. This announcement was made by the bank's chairman, Thomas Jordan, at the Point Zero Forum in Zurich. He emphasized that this is not just an experiment. Instead, it will involve, quote, real money equivalent to bank reserves and will be used to test actual transactions with market participants. The pilot project is set to kick off soon, and it's important to note that this CDBC will be designed for the wholesale intra-bank market. For example, transactions between the HSBC and B of A, not something you would use to go buy eggs. Actually, there are no plans to introduce a public or retail version in the current pilot. While the possibility of introducing retail CDBCs isn't completely off the table, the bank is taking a cautious approach at the moment. This move by the SMB comes as central banks worldwide are exploring the creation of digital versions of their currencies. This trend has been driven by a decrease in cash usage. That's a shift that's been accelerated in some places by the COVID-19 pandemic. Countries like China, Japan, Brazil, and Australia are leading the charge in the development of CDBCs. However, not all central banks share the same enthusiasm for CDBCs. For instance, in the United States, Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller expressed skepticism about the need for a CDBC. Speaking at an event in Brisbane, Australia in November 2022, Waller stated that he didn't see a compelling reason to develop an official digital dollar at present. He described it as, quote, a solution searching for a problem. Editors note, I've worked in government for a while. That is a common issue. Now, despite the varying views on CDBCs, it's clear that digital currencies are becoming an increasingly important part of the global financial landscape. As the SNB moves forward with its pilot project, it will be interesting to see how this impacts the broader conversation around CDBCs and their potential role in the future of finance. From the Swiss Alps, let's take a quick trip to the Lion City. But before we do that, remember to like, follow, and subscribe to our podcast to stay updated with the latest crypto news. Now, let's see about Singapore. The Monetary Authority of Singapore, in collaboration with the Bank for International Settlements and other financial institutions, has proposed a framework for the development of open, interoperable networks for tokenized digital assets. This initiative is known as Project Guardian. It's brought together 11 institutions to test asset tokenization across various financial asset classes, including wealth management, fixed income, and foreign exchange. Prominent banking institutions such as HSBC, Standard Chartered, DBS, and Citi will conduct these pilot studies. Now, we do know that Standard Chartered is in the process of creating an initial token offering platform. This platform will issue asset-backed security tokens that will be listed on the Singapore exchange. The bank is working with the payments platform Link Logis on the project. Kai Fair is the global head of trade and working capital at Standard Chartered. He said the initial pilot trade demonstrates the feasibility of asset-backed tokenization. This innovative structure presents potential opportunities for investors to participate in financing real-world economic activity. While the MAS is not particularly supportive of the crypto ecosystem, it is committed to promoting the technologies of the industry to improve existing traditional financial systems. Leong Sing Cheong is the Deputy Managing Director of Markets and Development at the Authority. She stated that despite efforts to discourage and limit speculation in cryptocurrencies, they see significant potential for value creation and efficiency gains in the digital asset ecosystem. Recently, they proposed standards for the use of digital money. These standards apply to central bank digital currencies and stable coins alike. This move is seen as a significant step towards the integration and acceptance of digital currencies in the mainstream financial system. 
These efforts to create a framework for digital assets and the willingness to test these assets across various financial sectors show their commitment to exploring the potential of digital currencies. The proposed standards for digital money also indicate that the MAS is taking steps to ensure that these digital assets are regulated and safe for all parties involved. The involvement of major banking institution in these pilot programs also shows the growing acceptance of digital assets in the traditional financial sector. These banks' willingness to explore and invest in digital assets could lead to more widespread use and acceptance of these assets in the future. As we leave the tropical city of Singapore, we head to the UK. But first, a quick reminder to hit that like button if you're enjoying our show. Now, let's check out the latest from the Bank of England. The Bank of England is making significant progress in its development of a central bank digital currency, sometimes known as Britcoin. Interestingly, as one might expect, the technology underpinning the central currency may not be blockchain. This revelation came from Tom Mutton. He's the BOE's director of fintech. And during a recent gathering of technologists, this information came out. The Bank of England hosted the group, and that group could not reach a consensus on the type of ledger to use for the CDBC. This has led the bank to consider testing various ledger technologies, including, but not limited to, blockchain. The idea of Bitcoin first came to light when the UK's Treasury Department and the BOE set up a joint task force. This group, established in April 2021, was tasked with researching the feasibility and design of a UK CDBC. Fast forward to February 2023, and the bank released a consultancy paper detailing the proposed design of the digital pound. Currently, the Bank of England and His Majesty's Treasury are actively seeking feedback on this proposed design. They're inviting stakeholders and technology experts to share their thoughts and suggestions. The feedback period is open until June 30th. Mudden made it clear that the Bank of England wants its CDBC to be compatible with distributed ledger business models in the private sector. However, he also expressed some skepticism about whether distributed ledgers offer more efficiency than traditional ledgers. In addition to ledger technology, Mudden also discussed the privacy aspect of the CDBC. He emphasized that the CDBC would prioritize user privacy and would not collect personal information. The Bank of England's role, according to Mutton, is to provide the infrastructure for the CDBC. The innovation, on the other hand, would be the responsibility of private entities. Mutton further explained that no data would be shared with the bank. The bank would be aware of the transactions that have occurred, but they would not have any details on the individuals involved in those transactions. Wallet providers, on the other hand, would have access to user data, but would not have access to the transactions data. Furthermore, even this limited access to user data would require the user's consent. The Bank of England has previously stated that the digital pound could coexist with private stablecoins with a particular focus on retail. As the development of the digital pound continues, it will be interesting to see how these plans evolve and what impact they will have on the world of crypto. From the UK, let's cross the English Channel to the European Union. Let's dive into the EU's latest move on crypto regulations. The European Union made significant progress this Tuesday, securing a political agreement on new bank capital legislation that includes crypto assets. This move came as lawmakers aim to implement stringent regulations to prevent cryptocurrencies without backing from infiltrating the conventional financial system. The Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee of the European Parliament announced this agreement via a tweet. And that tweet came after a meeting involving representatives from the European Parliament, national governments, and the European Commission. It was the EC that initially proposed these new rules back in 2021. To transform this political agreement into legislation, it needs to be voted upon by the EU's council member states and their lawmakers. The new rules could also bring about comprehensive changes to how banks evaluate the risk associated with corporate and home loans. Now, this is a subject that has sparked controversy. Elizabeth Svantesen is the Swedish finance minister who led the discussions on behalf of EU member states. She praised these new rules. According to her statement, these rules will enhance the strength and resilience of banks operating within the union. The council statement also confirmed that the agreement includes, quote, traditional prudential regime for crypto assets, although it did not provide any details. At present, the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision is in the process of finalizing a global crypto banking rulebook. This rulebook is expected to assign a maximum possible risk weight of 1,250% to free-floating cryptocurrencies, indicating something of a hardline stance. 
EU parliamentarians are keen to implement these measures as soon as possible. They're also advocating for a softer approach towards regulated stablecoins. During the late stages of these discussions, the European Commission proposed a compromise that would somewhat relax the stringent stance for regulated stablecoins. This proposal seems to have gained the favor of EU governments. Leaving the EU behind, we now head to Austria, where Binance has made a significant move. But before we get into that, remember to hit that like button if you're finding our updates useful. Now, let's see what Binance has been up to. Binance has been making strategic moves to reduce its presence in the European Union. The company recently withdrew its license application in Austria, following similar exits from the Netherlands, Cyprus, and the UK. The decision to withdraw the Austrian application came under the pressure of the local regulator after Binance had set up a subsidiary reportedly setting up Binance Austria with the intention of obtaining that license. For a while now, we've been covering this trend of Binance, reducing its footprint in the European markets. This pattern is consistent across Binance's operations. After failing to secure regulatory approval, the company recently left the Netherlands and applied for deregistration in Cyprus. It also canceled its registration with the UK Financial Conduct Authority. Despite these exits, Binance still maintains registrations in several EU countries, including Italy, Spain, and France. In the case of France, however, it is reportedly under investigation for alleged money laundering. In addition to its European challenges, Binance is also facing legal issues in the US. The CFTC and the SEC have both filed lawsuits against the exchange and its founder, Changpeng Zhao. These allegations include violations of federal laws and failure to register at the exchange in the US. Meanwhile, in Australia, Binance faced a sudden disruption when it was given less than a day's notice before being cut off from the local banking system. This abrupt action, initiated by the exchange's payment partner, affected approximately 1 million customers based in Australia. While the reasons behind this action remain unclear, it was suggested that it was due to concerns about scams and fraud associated with cryptocurrency. On the same day that Binance was cut off, Westpac, one of Australia's big four banks, announced that it would begin trials to block crypto exchange payments. Shortly after, Commonwealth Bank, another major Australian bank, started implementing similar crypto-related payment blocks. Ben Rose is the head of Binance Australia. And despite these challenges, he said the loss of access to their banking partner has not significantly impacted the business. Binance users have adapted by using other methods. In this case, he was likely referring to purchase and deposits to bank cards that are still supported by the platform. Rose emphasized the need to work with regulators in the banking sector. He suggested the possibility of implementing sensible licensing for the industry. He called for Australia to move quickly in this regard as jurisdictions worldwide are advancing their cryptocurrency regulations. From Austria and Australia, we now cross the ocean to the United States. Let's see what's happening in the US with regards to crypto regulation. Representative Maxine Waters reached out to key regulators to discuss the passage of a crypto-focused bill. This bill aims to provide a clear path for U.S.-based digital asset exchanges to register with the SEC. So Waters wrote to Gary Gensler, the SEC chairman. She asked him to outline how the digital asset market structure proposal would impact the SEC's existing authority. This includes its mission to protect investors and to maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets. A similar letter was sent to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, asking her to explain the bill's potential impact on the Treasury Department, as well as its mission to promote economic prosperity and to ensure the financial stability of the United States. The digital asset market structure proposal was co-signed by Representative Patrick McHenry and Representative Glenn Thompson. This bill is a significant crypto oversight proposal. The draft legislation would approve digital securities, commodities, and stablecoins for trading. It also provides guidelines for distinguishing a crypto-based security from a commodity. However, the bill has been met with some resistance within the Democratic Party. The SEC, under Gensler's leadership, has been trying to regulate the crypto industry through a series of enforcement actions, targeting major industry players such as Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, and Bittrex. Waters asked Gensler and Yellen to provide responses to her requests by the end of this week. She also expressed some concern about consumer protections in the bill and has asked both Yellen and Gensler to be prepared to brief House Financial Service Committee members on their views and recommendations. The bill sparked debate among Republicans and Democrats in the House Financial Services Committee. Waters argued the bill could hinder SEC efforts. 
She said the bill appears to halt any enforcement actions by the SEC against crypto firms, even when they've committed fraud. This provisional registration could reward bad actors with a get out of jail free card and allow them to continue harming consumers and investors. On the other hand, Gensler said the existing rules already regulate crypto and that new legislation is not needed. Meanwhile, Yellen said she wants Congress to pass additional crypto regulation, saying she sees some holes in the system. Despite these divides, McHenry said he plans to hold a committee session to vote on the legislation in the second week of July. This move shows the growing importance of crypto regulation in the political sphere and the need for clear guidelines to protect investors and to maintain market stability. So what happened? Tonight we examined the latest developments in the world of central bank digital currencies and cryptocurrency regulations. We started off in Switzerland, where the Swiss National Bank announced its plans to launch a wholesale CDBC on the nation's digital exchange. This pilot project, which is not merely an experiment but involves real-world equivalent to bank reserves, is set to kick off soon. Next, we went to Singapore, where the Monetary Authority of Singapore has proposed a framework for the development of open, interoperable networks for tokenized digital assets. This initiative, known as Project Guardian, involves 11 institutions testing asset tokenization across various financial asset classes. Our journey then took us to the UK, where the Bank of England is making significant progress in the development of the Britcoin. Interestingly, the technology underpinning this digital currency might not be blockchain. We then crossed the English Channel to the European Union, where lawmakers secured a political agreement on new bank capital legislation that includes crypto assets. The new rules aim to prevent cryptocurrencies without backing from infiltrating the conventional financial system. From the EU, we moved to Austria, where Binance withdrew its license application under the pressure of the local regulator. This follows similar exits from the Netherlands, Cyprus, and the UK. Finally, we crossed the Atlantic to the United States, where Maxine Waters reached out to key regulators on the passage of a crypto-focused bill. This bill aims to provide a clear path for US-based digital asset exchanges to register with the US SEC. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating, or maybe a review. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.